worship. Please be reminded that Pastor's Bible study continues on Tuesday at 6.45 on Facebook Live. Asking many of you to join in uh, for this time of learning and education and growing in God's Word. On Thursday night, the Lit Bible Study, Living in Truth, will continue on the Zoom platform at 7.30 p.m. The login information is available on the website, rcgministries.org. Uh, this coming Saturday, amen, amen. It's the 75th church anniversary banquet. And we are asking you to please arrive by 1.15, 1.30. We want to begin on time at 2 p.m. 1.15, 1.30 gets you in and gives you an opportunity to get settled and to get seated. Then on next Sunday, uh, it is the actual church anniversary. Bishop Rodney Till from the Jerusalem Baptist Church in Georgetown will be with us, a great preacher, a great singer. Amen. 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 He'll be with us. We'll be, in our service, we're going to be treated with a musical selection by Deacon Daryl Jones on saxophone. Our praise dancers will be performing, and we're just looking forward to having a blessed time in the Lord. At the banquet, ladies and gentlemen, uh, up in our sanctuary, these are 82-inch flat-screen Samsung 4K TVs with all the bells and whistles. Uh, at our banquet, we have a brand new 58-inch uh, Samsung TV, same quality, and we're going to raffle that off for a $10 donation. Amen. $10 donation. And if you live in the general DMV area, we will bring the TV to your house. Now, if you live in Woodbridge, we will bring the TV back to the church. <laughs> and we'll make arrangements so that you can, so that you can pick up your TV. Praise God. It's a $10 donation. Those funds will actually go to the direct cost of the banquet. This is how we're paying for our kids. Our kids are going free. So all we need you to do is donate $10, and you might leave with a 58-inch flat screen, 4K, Thank you. altered it up, somebody's <laughs> name it and claim it. And the pastor already said he's going he gonna to buy 10 tickets. That ain't right. That ain't right. Amen. But come and let's enjoy one another at the banquet. We certainly have a great buffet dinner. We have a, a Christian comedian coming to be special music. We're going to have a good time. It's a celebration. Amen? Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. Come on, clap your hands. You know, it's been a to serve and to the ministry. We always say it's because of your faith and support that we can continue to do ministry. All of the methods of giving are there on the screen. Please give as the Lord leads you. Our ushers are coming now. Okay. So the trustees have said uh, it's uh, cash or card for your TV donation. So cash or card. A lot of us don't carry cash, so please bring your car. Everybody got it? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. All right. So our deacons are coming now. Our ushers are coming. Uh, those of you who are giving in the sanctuary, let's pray now over these gifts of God. Every man according as he purpose in his heart to let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege and opportunity to bring our tithes and our offerings for the support of the ministry. We ask, oh God, that whatever we give, whether it be little or much, that it will be used to the upbuilding of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. This time, Pastor Buck is going to come to greet you. Let's greet him with a hearty amen.
I came to the table with nothing. All I had was my guilt and my shame. Jesus came to the table with a promise from the Father and all that that entailed. He saw me in my ruined condition. And he didn't just turn and walk away. He invites us to the table to sup with him and the Father. He invites us all today. He took my nothing and gave me everything. He took my broken heart and he taught me how to sing. He saw me as I was. All right, all and right. Saw all I could be. He counted the cost and absorbed the loss at Calvary. Sometimes it's hard to show my thanksgiving to the one who now called me friend. I wasn't trying to know him, wasn't even trying to love him, but he called me out to bring me in. He saw me in my ruined condition. All right, all right. And he didn't just turn and walk away. He said, Father, forgive him, for I know how much you love him, and I will preach the way. He took my nothing, and yet gave me everything. He took my broken heart, and he taught me how to sing. He saw me as I was. At Calvary, he took my nothing and gave me everything. He took my broken heart and he taught me how to sing. He saw me as I was and saw how I could be. He counted the cost and absorbed the loss. He saw who I was yeah. and all I could be. He took my nothing and yet gave me everything at Calvary.
it all planned out. She was going to get up early, catch the Uber to the training station. She's in school in Morgan State. She was going to catch the Uber to the train station, take the train station to Bowie. Her mother was going to pick her up, and they were going to be here on time. Because y'all know I got a thing for punctuality. <laughs> and that's not, and that always work out on time. <laughs> Amen. But anyhow, what happened was the Uber driver didn't show up where he was supposed to be at his appointed time, and she missed her train. So my wife called me and said, sorry, Mr. Train, I'm, drunk, I'm on my way to Morgan, but I plan on being there on time anyway. And I said, look, honey, if you, you just drive carefully and safely. Amen. Amen. You Amen. get there when you get there. God is in control. You just drive your normal self. Don't try to rush. And Amen. God saw fit to pull up her. She pulled up right behind Pastor Butler. Amen. And we are here. And now I feel good. Why? Thank you. I don't know how you all was. I was. That was all I can do not to jump up and, and and start singing loud and just get up and, and just have a choir time over there to myself. But I'm I'm new, so I you know I want to be a good So I ain't going to show out too much about that. But I tell you, I, I was holding myself back. All right, do me. All right, now be careful. Y'all said it. So now. You all came to hear a word from the Lord. That's why I'm here today. That is my assignment. So if you would turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke, the second chapter. I'm going to be beginning with verse 41. Now, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, but if your app, if your book, if your whatever your iPad, if it says Bible, we're going to end up in the same place. Amen. Is that all right? Luke. Second chapter, beginning with verse 41. If you have to say amen. Amen. If you don't have to say hold up, hold up. I knew it was a couple of people. <laughs> Luke, second chapter, beginning with first verse 41. Amen. 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 It reads this way. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth. But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first. Said, mm -hmm. Come on, y'all say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That happened. Because they assumed that he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up at the meeting, I'm sorry, when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious leaders, listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere. But why do you need to search? He asked. This is Jesus talking now. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? King James says, didn't you know I must be about my father's business? Yes. yes. But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and he was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Ain't that sweet? What a mother. <laughs> Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Amen. If you could, if I, if I could, I'd like to speak to you all for just a few moments from the topic, when you move, I move. Keeping your eye on Jesus. Yes, sir. When you move, I move. Father, we come before you right now. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this space. We ask now that you would prepare our hearts and minds to allow us to learn whatever you would have us taught today. Allow me to decrease that you might increase. Allow your message to come forth with clarity and power. That it not just be heard, but it also be planted in our hearts that it might 
grow up in our lives as acts pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 When you move, I move. Keeping your eye on Jesus. Now, you, you know, move means several different things. To say somebody move. But for instance, for instance when, we, when we exercise, we want to move, right? Exercising, exercising it requires movement. Right? And then, if I relocate from this place to a house over there, then we are going to move, right? It could be a relocation from one place to a, one place to another place, right? In chess or checkers, when you're about to pick up a piece and go to another space, it's known as a And you have to be strategic about how you move, because there will be consequences, right? Amen. How many of you are, uh, back in the day when we used to court, when we used to date, y'all remember that? <laughs> back when you used to be in the cafeteria and you looked at somebody and gave them the eye for about two weeks before you finally made your Ooh. Oh, y'all y'all with me. Y'all got track. Make that move, y'all remember Shalom? Make that move. Yes. Right now. Right. right. It used to be that you waited for the man to make the move and the woman, the woman would, she would, she would leave the breadcrumbs. You had to pick up what she was putting down, and then you knew you needed to make your move. But nowadays, the women are also making their move, right? Amen. And then in today's lexicon, there's a new way we talk about move. Have you ever, you know, sometimes move takes on a, a nuanced meaning to move on a moral analysis of how one conducts themselves in a situation. Y'all heard it say it like this? I don't, I like the way you move. Uh -huh. Meaning, I like the way you handle your business. Uh -huh. I like the way you do. And then there are people who you look at them and you don't really like the way they treat people. You know, I don't like the way that person moves, right? Uh -huh. when, you, when you don't do things right, when you don't do things orderly, you don't treat people nicely, we don't like the way they move. So now, if we are going to be Christians, we got to move how Jesus moves. Uh -huh. And in order for us to do that, we have to study Jesus for the purpose of growth and emulation. Emulation means copy, to be like him. It requires us to consider each of these applications of to move going back. For example, now, now that you put Jesus in the center, even though Jesus is in the center, this is your temple, you still have to exercise, right? So you got to remember Jesus even when you move it in your exercise. When you are moving from one location to another location, you got to relocate from D.C. to Florida, you got to make sure Jesus is in that decision before you make that move, right? All right, all right. In life, life is like a game of checkers. You got to make some moves, right? Yeah. You better make sure Jesus is studying with you. You study Jesus in that move before you make that move to the next thing, right? In our relationship, you better make sure. All right, now. Yes. You better make sure God is in the midst. When you talk about linking up with somebody, yeah. and I'm talking about officially linking up with somebody, y'all. Right. I mean, I'm talking about marriage. Right. You want to make sure God is in that move, right? And if God is the center, if Christ is the center of your life, which means that number one, we are going to love Him with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls, but also we're going to love our neighbors as ourselves. That means the way we move around people is going to be centered in, in God. Amen. Amen. In order for us to move like Jesus and move with Jesus, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus so that we can be where he is. Amen. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 17, 22, and I'm not going to preach this, but I want you all to be aware of something. And at around about verse 20, 21, it talks about the people were in camp. God had led them out of bondage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They were now in the wilderness, and it says that God led them daily with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. By night. By night. Right? Okay. There's a few observations I want to share with you before I get into this word. Number one, the cloud and the pillar represent Christ. It says that God never moved the cloud and the pillar from their presence. In other words, the cloud and the pillar was ever present. Therefore, Christ is ever present. Amen. Number two, when we follow him, it says, watch, 
It says he was there by a cloud in the daytime and a pillar of fire at night. In other words, it didn't matter when he moved because he was a cloud in the daytime and a pillar of fire at night. You could always see him to know when to move. Mm -hmm. So whether we're in darkness or in light, you can still find Jesus and know where to move and when to move. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Next observation. When the cloud and the fire stood still, the people stayed put. Amen. Mm -hmm. But when the cloud and the fire moved, the people followed. Mm -hmm. And in order for them to follow, they had to keep their eyes on the cloud and the fire. Yes, sir. Yeah, when Jesus moves, we got to move. Right. And when he stays put, we got to stand still. Yes, sir. In order to do that, we got to know how to keep our eyes on. We got to be in tune with Jesus. Yes, sir. So now, can, can I just take a few minutes to go into the text? Take your time, now. And leave y'all with like three points. Yeah. And then we can get out of here. Is that all right? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Amen. Every year, it says, every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. <laughs> When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. And after the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth. But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. And his parents didn't miss him at first. Here's my first point. Don't let tradition be the only cadence for how and when you move. All right, now. Let me say that again. Don't let tradition be the only cadence for how and when you move. What do you mean? Here we go, here we go. It says they went to, to Passover, right? The festival of Passover. Mm -hmm. They went because it's what they did. It was Passover time. Mm -hmm. It was a festival. Uh -huh. They came and they did what you do in festivals. Yes, sir. They went and when it was over, it was time to go home because that's what tradition said. When the festival had festivals, they all had it home. Tra tradition dictated that they came, they had a good time, and they went home. At the right time, they went. When the thing was over, we all left and we went home. They moved when the party ended because tradition dictated that you move when the party ends. Now watch this now. Jesus came, but he didn't come for tradition. He came to ask questions and listen. He came to get understanding. He came to grow. He didn't move because he had not reached the level of growth he wanted to attain. And so therefore, he stayed behind to ask him questions and to listen. He wasn't on the tradition. He was on the growth. Tradition can be good. But it's got to take a back seat to understanding and growth. Come on, Doc. Come on, Doc. Keeping your eyes on Jesus will always cause you to prioritize growth and understanding over keeping up with the tradition. Here's a, here's a per personal story for you. When I was growing up, I grew up in the country. I'm a country boy. I'm from, from Southern Virginia. And uh, Lawrenceville, Virginia. Between and 40 and South Bend. All right. All right, I knew I was going to get y'all. <laughs> now, what's interesting about back then when I was growing up is you didn't have church every Sunday. Your pastor was a traveling pastor. He would be a pastor of a first Sunday church and then a second Sunday church and a third Sunday church. Now, my father was a deacon. He went to church at somebody's church every week. And sometimes he made me go with him. But what we were required to do was go to Sunday school every week. We had Sunday school at our church every Sunday. Now, tradition says that all the children go to Sunday school. Right? You got to check that box before you do anything else. You got to go to Sunday school. All right. So oftentimes I would go to Sunday school, I got that check, and if my dad didn't make me go to church with him, now I'm planning out the rest of my day. What can I do with the rest of my day? Now that I have gone to Sunday school, I check that box. Right? I can go. Now, here's another thing. My mother was very particular. She didn't let everybody come over my house and play on my basketball goal, and she wouldn't let me go over everybody's houses to right. go play basketball. So I had to be selective about who came over. I had to be selective about who I asked to go play with. All right. But I would say, Mom, okay, look, Mom, I went to Sunday school. Can I go X, Y, Z and play ball now? And she would say, 
I know you went to Sunday school, but did you learn anything? Right. Come on now. Tell me something you learned, and then we'll talk about what you knew the rest of the day. All right. In other words, I know you went and checked the box, right. but did you learn? Right. Is there an opportunity for growth? That's right. it. Tell me something you so I don't have to tell her, look, this is what I learned today. And once she was satisfied that there was an opportunity for me to grow because I could tell her I understood what I learned, then she would let me go. Yes, sir. Because a good mother is not just going to let you check the box. She wants to make sure you got something out of the thing that you did. All right, all right. Shout out to the good mothers. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> and that's how tradition is. Tradition is really in place to make sure you do the things you're supposed to do. But if you can get so wrapped up in tradition that you forget to get, you forget to get the meaning on, and now. the learning and the purpose for the thing that you're doing, so much so that you just do it because you just take the box. Think but Jesus it. was not about the tradition. Jesus was about learning and growing. Yes, sir. And that's what he wants us to be about. Learning and growing. It's good to have a tradition, but are you getting anything out of it? Think about it. Is there something that's going to cause you to grow out of what you learn? But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first, but because they assumed, somebody say assumed. They assumed he was among the other travelers, but when he didn't show up that evening, he started looking for, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. And when they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, it took them three days to get back. Oh, mercy. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious leaders, listening to them and asking questions. Here's my second one. Failing to move when Jesus moves or stay where Jesus stays always causes us to have to backtrack to get what we missed. Come on, now. Think about it. Failing to move when Jesus moves or stay when Jesus stays always causes us to have to backtrack to get what we missed. Amen. The only way we can make sure of moving when Jesus is moving is to be intentional about knowing where Jesus is. Amen. Yes, sir. Let me say that again. The only way that you can know that you're moving when Jesus is moving is to be intentional about knowing where Jesus is. All right now. Knowing that Jesus is in the movement. I'm sorry. Know that Jesus is in the movement. If you can't verify that Jesus is in the movement, then stay where you are. That's right. Amen. Not based on tradition, but based on truth and understanding. Yes, sir. Now here's the problem. Here's, here's the main thing. There can be no assumptions. Right. Uh -huh. Let me say it again. There can be no assumptions. First of all, they didn't miss him at first because they assumed. It says that right there in the text. They assumed. Uh -huh. Right? They assumed that Jesus was down with the traditional movement. And it was time to go, so it's time to go. We are in the festival. It's time to go. Clearly, Jesus is going because it's time to go. Mm -hmm. Jesus should be able to see that everybody else is getting ready to go. They're packing up paper plates, get the stuff that they ain't using. <laughs> Jesus can see us picking this stuff up. He, he needs to be getting ready to go. He can see us moving, getting himself ready. And if, if we all get ready, then Jesus ought to be getting ready. And when we move, he's going to move. But guess what? Jesus don't move when we move. That's right. 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 Yes, sir. Right. Amen. So they assumed that because everybody around him was moving, Jesus must be in this movement somewhere. So he's going to move when we move. Mm -hmm. Then they assumed. Then they assumed he was with the relatives and friends. They looked. They, they noticed he wasn't there. Then they assumed well he must be with the relatives and friends. Therefore, they didn't put their eyes on him to know where he was. Hello. They assumed he was with their family and friends. Right. And so therefore, they didn't look at look for him immediately and put their eyes on him so that they could know where he was. Yeah. Three days worth of traveling needed to be redone because they failed to be intentional about knowing where Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we assume that Jesus is in the movement, but he's not. Mm -hmm. All right. We assume that Jesus is in the movement because it looks good. Yeah. Uh -huh. But everything that looks good ain't good for you. All 
All right, say that again, Doc. They assume, sometimes we assume that he's in the movement because it's what we've always done. Mm -hmm. And clearly if it's what we've always done, then Jesus must be in this thing somewhere. Uh -huh. But I just told you, Jesus ain't moved by tradition. Jesus is moved by meaning. Jesus is moved by our heart. Yes. Sometimes we assume that Jesus is in the movement because it's what my parents did. That's the way my parents did it, so that's the way we ought to do it. How many of y'all know your parents messed some stuff up? <laughs> I mean, my wife and I raised three kids. There are several things that we said we are not going to do this the same way our parents did it to us. Amen. Because we are messed up because of what our parents did to us. <laughs> you got to learn and do better. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and then sometimes we assume that Jesus is in the movement because the good crowd. The good crowd is doing it. And so he must be in there somewhere. But how many times have you had to go back down roads you've already traveled? Right. Or redo work you've already done? All right, now. Or re-experience unnecessary consequences because we failed to be intentional about making sure we knew where Jesus was in the movement. Yes, sir. We gotta be intentional about knowing where Jesus is. And the only way you can be intentional about knowing where Jesus is is you have to make an effort day by day, moment by moment, to be connected with him. That's it. That's it. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere. Jesus said, well, why do you need to search? You know I had to be by my father's business. All right now. Yes. But they didn't understand what he did. Here, here's, here's the thing about uh, when we lose track of where Jesus is because we didn't keep our eyes on him intentionally. You know, the good thing is, this is my last point that I'm going to let y'all go. We can always get back in step. Right. Well, well, amen. Come on now. Uh, say, it, say it, Doc. We can always get back in step with Jesus. Yes. Number one, first thing you got to do is you got to take responsibility for your own actions. Yes. Hello. As parents of a 12 year old, they should have put their eyes on him so they didn't know where he was. Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. Instead, watch what they did. They said, Why have you done this to us? I mean, you talk about shifting the blank. <laughs> Negro, you should have had your eyes on your son. I mean, and then on top of that, you knew you had a special son. You mean to tell me you let Jesus leave somewhere behind for three days? And you gonna say, where that boy? I haven't seen him. He must be. And then three days later, you come back and you find him out. And it says they were frantic. They were looking everywhere for him. And the first thing you say is, why you do this to us? No. Why were you not intentional about knowing where that 12-year-old son was? Amen. Amen. We often blame Jesus for our own shortcomings. Yeah. Or we blame somebody else All right. for our own shortcomings. It, the first thing you got to do to get back in step with Jesus is, is own up, you got to fess up. Amen. That's right. mm -hmm. Fess up when you mess up. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. But parents, let me, let me just read you about this in if you got little ones, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Amen. You got, hello to the mothers out there. Yes. Keep your eye on your children. My wife and I, we try to do this regularly. It'll, it'll get better now because it's, it's, the spring is breaking. And I can see my mid midsection needs to get back to it. But my <laughs> wife and I, we, we live down in Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. And every day we try to take a walk down on the board. We try to take a three-mile walk down on the board walk, right? And it's interesting because the thing about walking on the boardwalk is you get to see people. Yeah. And we like, well, I don't know about her. I like the people watch. I like the people watch. I like the people talk. I, I'm always in the mix. Rhonda likes to just keep going. <laughs> but this one particular day, we were walking, and uh, we were on the boardwalk, and there are people down on the sand, and there's the steps that you can get off the boardwalk down into the sand. Now, there was a mother who was engaged in a conversation with another adult lady. 
He had two children that were down in the sand playing, minding their own business. She had obviously left her phone down in the sand. It had gotten covered up, but the little girl, she must have been no more than three or four years old. The little girl found the phone, shook it off, and brought it up the steps and tried to get her mother's attention. But the mother was so enthralled in the conversation she was having with the other lady that she was ignoring the little girl. And the little girl was trying to get her, she was patting her on the arm, patting her on the leg, and the lady was just ignoring her. Soon as she had an older brother, the brother must have been about seven or eight years old, he took the phone, he went to the mother. He tried to get her attention to give her a phone back. And she, she didn't even look down, she just kept talking. And the kids were going from the sand to the platform, back to the sand on this side, and she wasn't, and I said to her, my wife, I said, you know, if somebody had an evil mind, mm -hmm. they could take that child right now. Yeah. And she wouldn't even know it for another 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Because she was not intentional right. about making sure she had her eyes. Let me tell y'all something about my wife. Now, she might be talking, but you better believe it. <laughs> That peripherally, she knows, I saw that dude with that red shirt on the of my daughter's I saw the lady put something in her purse while she was over there by my daughter. I don't know what she put in her purse. I know she put something in there while she was standing. My wife is, she might look like she engaged with the person, but let her children be somewhere in right. She is aware of where they are, who's around them, and what might be happening where they are. Amen. And that's how we got to be mm -hmm. if we're going to be good, good mothers and good fathers. Yeah. But that's also how we got to be about Jesus. Oh, yeah. 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 We got to know, even when we're dealing with something, we got to be thinking peripherally, how would Jesus move in this situation? Yeah. Yeah. We got to be thinking, if I do this, is, am I going to be in line with Jesus if I take this next step? Yeah. Right? If we want to find Jesus, one of the first places we should look is a place where truth is being sought, where growth is welcomed, and we're most likely to have an encounter where God reveals himself to us, which is where? In the temple. Amen. If you're looking for Jesus, where is he most likely to be, to be found? In the temple. Duh. <laughs> where he can see and learn and get understanding and have an encounter with God. Yeah. Yes, now, I know you all are thinking, well, Jesus was God, but Jesus was man. So why did he, if you, if you go around and you read, Jesus was 12 years old and he had not yet gotten to his level of understanding and wisdom that he needed to get to in order to start his ministry. Amen. Because he was devoid of all his heavenly powers. He was man. And so he was still on a growth pattern. And in verse, 50, uh, in verse 51 and 52, it tells us that after he had this encounter, he continued to grow in wisdom. Yes, sir. Which means he needed to be in that space to get to ask questions. Yeah. To reason. This is what I think about it. Tell me what you think, teacher. That was Jesus. Now, if Jesus needed to grow in wisdom, well, think about it. How much more do we think? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Asking questions. That's it. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious leaders, listening to them and asking questions. Here's the thing. We have to be open to new revelations about what we thought we knew. All right. Let me say that again. Yes, sir. Remember I told y'all about tradition? Yeah. We did it that way because that's why that's how this is what we're supposed to do at this time. That's how we always did it. And I know, I know, I know my Bible. <laughs> 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 you have to be open and willing to accept the fact that what you knew 20 years ago, there might be something revealed to you today that will make you see that thing in a totally yeah. different way. Yeah. Because God is too big, he's too vast for us to know him fully. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. He reveals himself, because guess what? 
we can't handle everything he has right, right. That's why we have revelation, because when you have revelation, as you go up this hermeneutical spiral, as you go up higher and higher, things are revealed to you that you can handle now that you couldn't handle five years ago. All right. All right. All right. And so you've got to be open to new revelations about what you thought you knew. They were in Jerusalem for the Passover. And if we know our history, we know that Passover is a celebration that commemorates the death angel passing over all the houses of the Israelites that had blood, the blood of the perfect sacrifice lamb That's on it. their door frame That's and on their door tops. Those Egyptian houses that did not have the covering of blood lost their firstborn son. My Lord. This was the tenth and final plague that caused Pharaoh to free the Israelites and send them out of Egypt. Exodus 12 and 31 says this Pharaoh sent Moses and Aaron during the night. And he said, get out, he ordered. Leave my people and take the rest of the Israelites with you. Go and worship the Lord as you have requested. The Passover was a foreshadowing of the true lamb, Christ, without spot or wrinkle, who would shed his blood so that we could be covered and the angel of eternal death would pass over us and all who were covered. His act would allow us to do in truth and spirit what the Israelites requested, what the Pharaoh allowed, and what God created us all for, which was this. That we might worship him. Yes. Every time we open ourselves up to the possibility of new revelation, mm -hmm. it's a reason for us to worship him. Right. God created us, created us for the sole purposes of this, that we might worship him. Yeah. The whole reason why the Israelites demanded the Pharaoh let them go was that so that they might go and Worship him. That's it. When Jesus moved, we need to move. We need to keep our eyes on him so that we might continue to grow in him. And each time we grow in him, we ought to worship him. Yes, sir. Each time he reveals more about himself to us, we ought to worship him. Yes, sir. Yes. Every time we are freed yes. from one consequence yes. so that we can go further, we ought to stop and He let us do what he lets us do so that we can have breakthroughs and break chains and break strongholds and pull down barriers so that we can go somewhere and worship. Yes, God. I love it. I just want to let you know that if we're going to move when Jesus moves, we got to keep our eyes on him. And when we have our eyes on him and we move when he moves, he will take us to new heights. And when we get to that new height, always stop yes. and worship. Yes. God bless you. Yes. Amen. Oh, 
building today. We thank you so much on social media, man. Just go to our website. Drop us a line. Say today I made a decision. We'll be in touch with you to help you to grow and to help you to navigate your new life. So thank you for joining in with us. Father God bless those that have joined with us by social media. Be with them, guide them, help them to move when you say more. Not when the preacher, but when you say more. They move into a place of peace, a place of fellowship, a place of joy. In the name of Jesus. Be with them now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you Tuesday. 645 social media. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give it a one more hand clap of praise. That was good.